describes where one fits best in society based on their relationship to the means of production. Each class has a set of concepts and behaviors that are understood, accepted, and adopted by that respective class. These class cultures are and can often be used to distinguish between different classes. America, for instance, runs on class culture. We are most attracted to those who have similar classes as us and are often subconsciously group ourselves into these bodies. Although these cultures are primarily are prominent to us today, um, the sport of baseball provides a unique example in which these class cultures are a little less apparent. My aim in this research is to discover if the class composition of the Atlanta Braves, as indicated by education level and ethnicity, has changed over time, and what effects do those have on winning percentages. Baseball has been America's pastime for generations, yet somehow, over the past 15 years, it has dwindled in popularity. Little is known about why that is. In recent years, football and basketball have gained um, recognition through the United States. Many argue that baseball is boring, a season lasts over half of the year, and a typical game is just too long. The sport lacks the physical, in-your-face type of contact that football and, base and basketball have to offer. Baseball requires constant concentration and analysis to fully understand the game. Because of this, it is a challenge to watch and follow because it is a certain level of commitment to truly appreciate the sport. I argue that baseball is the most fundamental team sport. It requires a specialization of talents that are unlike any other. Nine players on the field at a time, covering up to 400 feet of area, it takes great cooperation and communication by all of its members. It is more difficult for a player to stand out in baseball simply because the nature of the sport does not allow it. In basketball, LeBron James or Kobe Bryant could have, have the potential to take over a game. It is unlikely that this would happen in baseball. Taking over a game requires the whole team's commitment. Because baseball is so team-oriented, it is imperative that its members understand their role on the team and execute it accordingly. Unlike football or basketball, baseball is not a contact sport in which players line up for one-on-one -on -one matchups. Rather, baseball requires more cohesiveness through the team. Each player must always be assertive and expecting. With one swing of the bat, four players have the potential to score at once. In every other sport, only one player can score at a time. Baseball is also the only sport in which defense is in control of the ball. No matter what, at least two defensive players, the pitcher and the pitcher, are a part of every single play. The team must gel and trust each other in order to win. That is why the chemistry of a team often determines success. In this paper, I will examine what factors are necessary for composing a successful team, focusing primarily on the Atlanta Braves. The Braves have been considered a powerhouse organization since 1990. Between 1990 and 2004, the Braves have won over uh, the Braves have won 14 consecutive division titles and still hold the record today, making them one of the most successful teams throughout the era. From this research, I hope to find a method by which a team is selected and what it takes to play the game at a professional level. Also of interest is the composition of major league teams, as the league has increased the demand for, a di for the more diverse players through a time of cultural expansion. The focus these will be towards trends in educational attainment and racial backgrounds, from recent years as well as earlier years when the Braves were located in Milwaukee. I intend on finding a level of maturity and confidence in the successful years that may be lacking in those least successful years. The trends of ethnicity in baseball are also relevant to this research to understand the shifts in recent years of the Braves rosters. I will begin my study by comparing four Atlanta Braves seasons, the 2012 team, 2008, 2000, and the 1995 season. These four years were selected because two of the teams, 2000 and 2012, shared the most similar winning percentages as compared to past winning teams within the last 20 years. I will compare these years to determine if there is a formula for success that exists. Then I will compare this data with those of the 2008 season in which the Braves finished fourth, placing just over 400% in winning percentages, resulting in their worst season in the last 20 years. Finally, I will compare those, that data with the season of 1995. The 1995 season is significant because this is the last year that, in which the Braves won the World Series. From these comparisons, I hope to find insight into winning percentages, um, 
which attribute to a winning, mediocre, and losing seasons. My variables will include educational attainment, ethnic diversity, and the age of a player to determine maturity level. To measure this, I have developed a three-point scale. One, being the player did not choose to attend college after high school. Two, being the player attended a two-year college or community college. And three, being the player attended a four-year four -year college or university. In figure one shows the educational level of players in 1995. In this year, six players attended a community college, while 16 attended a four-year college or university. The remainder of the team chose to enter the draft straight out of high school. In Figure Two, the 21 players did not choose to pursue, did not did choose to pursue an education past um, high school in 2000. The average level attainment in this year was roughly 2.02, meaning the majority of athletes chose to um, further their education before entering the draft. This year, the, the roster in 2000 was the most educated group of members um, on the Braves roster. In Figure 3, this is the educational level for the players' roster in 2008. Um, on this, in this year, the average was a 1.9 on the three-point scale. In comparison to the 2000 season, there's a slight decrease in overall education level among the players. Also, more players are taking advantage of the two-year junior college or community college option. However, note that the sample size of this data is not as large as the previous two years. This is because the 40-man active roster is only a maximum limit. The manager may choose to activate all 40 spots or not. In this, in this case, he only activated 38. In Figure 4, the educational level of, in the, of the 2012 um, roster is present. This year, the results showed that most players chose to opt out of college and pursue their professional career of, of baseball. Five players chose to attend a two-year college or university before committing to the, to the majors, while seven players decided to um, play for their college team before entering the draft. The educational, the average educational number in this data set is 8.81. Compared to the 2000 roster, this is a 7% decrease in educational level. Because these numbers are so slight, the discrepancy in the winning percentage in between 2000 and 2012 compared to the losing seasons of 2008, make it difficult to attribute education level of the players to wins per year. We have no measurable statistics that suggest that education is relative to performance. So we cannot make the case that there's any advantage or disadvantage in gaining a college education um, when playing baseball. In professional baseball, a refined skill, skill level is more valuable than a college degree. Although one may obtain such skills in college, it is not necessarily guaranteed. As described earlier, culture is determined by a group of people who occupy similar positions in an economic and social system within the society. Those players completing similar education levels would typically correlate to a similar class because education is the greatest class divide in the U.S. today. However, in baseball, education is not necessarily a requirement. Typically, education level has a positive correlation with salary in most occupations. Despite the lack of the salary cap in the major league, a league minimum is set. Adjusted for inflation, this number is approximately $400,000 per year per player. Even so, the league minimum places a player in the top 5% of the U.S. according to income. Therefore, signing with the Braves, for example, automatically places you in the top 5% of the class without needing any prerequisite education before, giving reason to believe that class culture is not a measurable um, in professional baseball. Another factor I looked at was the ethnic, ethnic diversity of players. With the increase in diversity in baseball, I will examine the trends of the rise of ethnic groups to the game. Jackie Robinson stepped foot on, on a field April 15, 1947, becoming the first African American player to join to play in a Major League Baseball game. Since then, this sport has increased the number of blacks playing the game. Figure 5 shows that the growth of, of African-American players in the leagues from 1946 to 1986. Although facing much diversity in those years, the game was completely reconstructed, adding almost 30% at black players to the league in 1986. According to Figure 6, we find that in recent years, the percentage of black players in the major league has dropped significantly. This statistic is particularly interesting because it seems that 
during this period, the percentage of black players might increase due to the push for racial equality at this time. However, Figure 7 indicates that the decline of, baseball, of the black population in baseball in 1991 through 2007 is not necessarily due to the return of the white man's sport that it once was 50 years before. However, it, the percentage of whites has actually decreased since 1991 by 8%. Instead, the decrease of African Americans in the league is coinciding at this time with the increase of Latino players throughout the league. As Ozzie Guillen, the manager of the Chicago White Sox, has said, American people are going, to need to play, are going to need a visa to play this game because we're taking it over. Now I will apply these trends to the years that I have researched with the Braves. As you can see from this figure, the 1995 roster was primarily born in the United States. Ethnic variation was very limited. The year 1995 was before the emergence of the Latino population that arose in the major leagues, as well as the rise of Japanese pitchers. According to the diversity baseball chart, the 1995 Braves season's diversity composition was somewhat underrepresentative of the league average. In 2000, the team grew somewhat more diverse. The number of U.S. born players dropped 5%, while the Latino and African players slightly grew. The 2000 um, Braves roster begins to pale that of the league minimum of the league average more closely. However, they are still overrepresented of the white population. In 2008, the roster grew significantly more diverse. The percentage of U.S. born players dropped 22% since 1995. Other nations represented were Australia, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Cuba. In figure 13, we see that the, we see the 2012 roster was the most diverse. Seven different countries are represented on the 40-man roster. The roster of 2012 best parallels that of 2008. The U.S. born players are still remaining less prominent as compared with the rosters of 95 and 2000. This year's, this year's roster correlates best with the league's average findings. Although the number of players in the United States is, um, although the majority of players are born in the United States, it's not to say that they are white. Figure 14 shows that the trends in the United States born um, Hispanic and black players percentages. The Hispanic trend line is the blue and the black trend line is the red line. In 1995, which is indicated as year one, only approximately 3% of U.S. born Hispanics was on the roster. However, 20% of blacks made, made up the Atlanta Braves roster that year. This number increases greatly in 2008, which is indicated as year three, where um, the Hispanic roster reached about 13%. This year is also interesting because both trend lines meet, meaning that there were equal numbers of African and Hispanic Americans in the league. Then in 2012, year four, both Hispanic and black percentages dropped to their lowest points. In 2012, there, was, there were no Hispanic Americans on the roster. From this research, I found that most Hispanic players do not live in the U.S. prior to becoming, to signing with the team. Rather, they come to the United States solely to play baseball. The black population is a little different. From 1995 till 2012, to, until 2000, the percentage of blacks in the, uh, on the Atlanta Braves roster remained relatively constant at 18%. This number gradually drops from 2000 to 2012. By 2012, the percentage of blacks fell roughly 10%. Recall that in figure 11 and 12, the results found that the percentage of U.S. born players all, dropped almost 20% from the previous two year study. The number of foreign players has increased significantly. This does not suggest that the black and Hispanic populations are decreasing um, in, the more break, in the more recent breaks rosters, but instead the number of foreign foreign players is being added to the rosters. According to Raceball by Rob Ruck, the reason for the increase of international players is simple. The average major league salary now tops $3 million. Black and Latino players no longer burn with the blatant indignities of segregated lodgings on the road of racial discrepancies in pay. They are among the best, played, put, the best paid players in the game 
in fact, accounting for 15 to 20 to 20 percent of the highest salaries. Growing up in poor countries, baseball is often the best option for these young athletes who are looking to earn a living. Because of the language barrier, a typical job in the United States would be difficult to obtain as a foreigner. Unlike language, however, baseball is the same in every country. One can prosper and be successful on the field without speaking a word of English. Because of the influx of foreigners, most organizations hire a Spanish-speaking translator, making it even easier for a Hispanic player to be successful in the United States. Also, Japanese translators have been encouraged by the league administrators as well. Regardless of the trends, the Braves' best and most accomplished year occurred with a roster consisting of 85% American-born players. In 2008, the Braves produced their worst season in the past 20 years. That same year, the percentage of American-born players was at its lowest. Another factor I researched was the average age of a player. This statistic is significant because there is a discrepancy in the demand, of, in the demand for both young rookie players and old, experienced veterans. Rookies have the advantage of young bodies and years to improve, while veterans have the advantage of maturity, experience, and understanding. In 1995, the average age of a team was 28.5 years old. It ranged from 21 to 41 years old. In 2000, the average age of the active man roster was 30.6 years old, and its range was 22 to 39. This was the oldest team of the teams I said. In 2008, the average was a 29.2 years of age, and the range was 22 to 42. And in this past year, 2012, the average of each player was 29.4 years old, while the range was 21 to 41 years. The data shows that in this year, the Braves were the most successful when the team had a young, the youngest average age, which which they did in 1995. The players were in their prime without having the pressures and expectations of making the playoffs like many of the veterans had faced before. This correlation may be relevant in determining win the winning percentage of a team. From these variables, we can conclude that average age, education level, and, winning and ethnicity coincide with winning percentage, although they do not suggest causation. Results suggest that the younger a team, the better they will play in the postseason. Overall, previous research in this, in this subject is deficient and would benefit from further study. Thank you.